So, yeah, if I put this one on. Okay, and then uh, once it reaches zero, I'll just switch over to us. All right, can you hear me? Yeah, I, uh, I can yes. hear you, so. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me finish. Yeah. Smack talking people on Twitter real quick. <laughs> Cool. So, I wonder if they can hear us. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to do it by the timer, like, cause I've already started. Oh, is it? Is it already streaming? Yeah. Mm. We could check on the phone, but I'm not on the app right now. Yeah, I'm just let me trying to post this in my groups. Let me take a look. That'd be, that'd be really funny if they could hear us and we just have this timer going for no reason. <laughs> Do we have the church tab? What? Do you have the church tab anywhere? No, we don't. We just have the, the monitor. Yeah. I could just pull up my phone. Yeah. I'm going to connect with Wi Fi. Oh, they, <laughs> <laughs> they can't hear us. <laughs> All right. I'm just going to, like. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> for, for those who are here, um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm just trying to go by the by the timer, the rules. Uh, right. Yeah, I got to push that right here, actually. So, right, pull it up on the screen over here. Right over here. <coughs> this, oh, this, sweet. This is gonna. This is because I, I feel awkward like transitioning over before the time reaches zero, <laughs> even though they can hear us. Oh, that's weird. I mean, it's it's a great like, yeah, build up. <laughs> Mo most streams you can't remember. like like yeah. Nintendo friends. They all have the ca countdown. The yeah. like um, the the anticipation is just like yeah. unbearable, right? Because yeah. <laughs> usually, usually like Ryan, Ryan, and I have the sense to like turn off the mics before the transition happens, right. so it's not like <laughs> people just talking into the air. But uh, all right, so we'll be actually live in like five seconds. So. <laughs> And here we go. Hello, everyone. <laughs> it's us. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> um, welcome to the 12th uh, Low Kick FGC podcast. Um, we have not done this in three days. Three weeks, actually. Because um, Combo Breaker went by, Smash Splash went by, and then last week I was dying. So uh, today we have our guest our streamer for low kick uh j brock pony um he is fantastic a fantastic streamer and he is the guy behind the scenes for super saturdays so uh glad to have you here thank you thank you mm -hmm. uh, i'm uh, still a work in progress uh yeah i, I don't like, <laughs> i feel like you gave me a little bit too much credit <laughs> I, I mean i just yeah. i just stated the facts bro uh, <laughs> that's what you did but, but um, uh but yeah like yeah we'll just I, jump jump right in oh go ahead <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I just want to let us be know I'm I'm relatively new to streaming, so mm -hmm. like it's gonna be a work in progress for like little seams you see here and there. Yeah. So But I I I'm under guidance of Ryan Ryan yeah. Porter, so this is actually great work for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, we're we're all we're all learning here. I'm actually very new with stream stuff myself. Like so that's that's why our stream so it was like a little weird starting off, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> um but yeah, we're just gonna jump right into it today. So as you uh saying in the title, we're gonna be talking about Smash Ultimate today. Um Jay Brock here is a uh, proficient Smash player. I am not. <laughs> <laughs> so uh uh I guess we'll just talk about it uh maybe from like the newbie perspective. 
and okay. the, the experience Smash player perspective. Um, because uh, when I first saw it, I was just like, okay, like there's like grab like trades now or like weird like or grab text, which I thought there were, but I saw there was like a Twitter. Uh, there, there was a there was a tweet uh, correcting uh, somebody who found that there was like, oh no, it just cancels out grabs that happen on the same frame. Mm. Like you don't actually get grabbed and then you can tech or something. Um, right. Yeah. Um, it's weird because they did mention that in a direct, and that's actually intended. Yeah. But like, unfortunately, they can't show much of it because like everything's yeah. happening so fast. Yeah. Um, they didn't surprisingly didn't have an item toggle, so they made competitive mm. matches hard to like spectate because gotcha. you get items flying at you. Mm. So no one is here practicing that. So they had to have a separate Switch unit to like have the actual competitive set, yeah. which was on the live stream, but like it was kind of on the low low. Yeah. Yeah. So that's an unfortunate part, but I can confirm, tech grabs are a thing. Oh so yeah. Okay. So yeah, that's right. actually uh, one of the coolest like integrations with that because we've been yeah. I I'm sure we've been asking that for a while. Is yeah, I I have yeah. I yeah me as like a the quote unquote like whatever fighting game player like. I like I play Smash and then I like I get grabbed and I'm like okay I saw that grab coming but I couldn't I couldn't take it. Like. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah, there's yeah. a lot of like BS that could happen. Like yeah. oh I thought I inputted grab but they got the grab first because yeah. certain grabs extend your hurt box mm -hmm. and like there's a lot of like parameters you have to study. Yeah, you know, and it get, it gets kind of petty. Yeah, because you know, <laughs> you know I mean? because like, most characters who have better grab like frame data mm -hmm. are gonna win that exchange. Yeah. Now that's kind of like more equal. It makes it more in depth. Yeah. Gotcha. You know, and say I think it's the same for. I'm not a professional FGC player, so I don't know how it is for regular fighting games where like when you yeah. throw out a grab and you can predict a grab, we have an easier time teching that. So when so usually the way like grab tech games will go or like situations rather. Um, if you see somebody like about to throw you, so like you, you'll just press grab, right? Or like mm. they're they're like right. they're like a few select players who, uh, oh, change the talk shows under Twitch category, <laughs> all right? <laughs> um, but no, um, they're like a few select players who can like see that uh, you're about to grab them, and then they'll just be like. Oh yeah, uh, I s I see the startup of that throw, so I'm gonna take it now, right? Mm, right. And it's like, like those types of players are rare, <laughs> but um, it 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 was good to see uh in Smash that there was some kind of um counterplay to them, like finally, right? Because um, I have another Smash playing friend. I I was asking, I was like, how do you get around grabs? Like, I don't understand. And then he's just like, well, you like spot dodge or you, you know, jab, right, or something like that. And usually, yeah. hopefully, your jab's like at least like frame three. Yeah. To like defend for if not, then like you're gonna eat this grab. Yeah. For the most part. Yeah, and I, I play characters like like villager, Lucina, right. Mm, so it's like right. I feel like I'm okay-ish, you know, okay. but uh. Well, with character choice, not with skill. Like, <laughs> I'm, <not bad. laughs> I'm still bad. <laughs> yeah, but but um. But yeah, I do you think uh do you think the changes overall are going to going to be good for like complete like newcomers? Cuz I've I've heard a lot of Smash players say that uh they think it'll actually make it worse, right? Mm. Like with the roll changes, like how you can like only roll like a certain number of times before you All right, let me uh yeah. listen, let me hit you a brief yeah, history. Yeah, 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 hit me. I've been playing this. I've been playing Yeah, hit me with the Smash. I've been playing since uh, <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Melee. Okay. And like we <coughs> most people can agree that's like the hardest game in the series. If not yeah. 64, because 64 has like a different amount of hits done, mm. a lot, a lot of like wacky shit you can do. Yeah. On on that type of game, Melee too. Yeah. But um, but yeah, coming from Melee to uh Project M, Project M was another thing. Yeah. Along alongside with Brawl, that kind of like strive for like what Smash 4 Ultimate is gonna get. But I'll get back to that later. Yeah. And um, I also played Brawl a little bit. Um, wasn't feeling it, but I did appreciate some of the the mechanical aspects mm. and stuff like that. And the Smash Four when it came in, it just. <laughs> I it, 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 it blew up in people's faces because yeah. it, it had accessibility. Yeah. Um, there's bread and butter combos, but what the problem with that game was like because there's like bread and butter combos, there wasn't like um, there's like a half yeah ass approach of like the competitive approach. Yeah. We're like um yeah we got combos here and there but there was no depth. Yeah. It's literally what you see what you get. You you couldn't really do much else. You're kind of limited in that freedom. Mm. So you had to pick the characters with the better frame data and that yeah. it holds true for most of the games. Yeah. For the most part. As you, as you can see, um, 
going forward with a series, like, you only have, like, a few select of characters. Mm. The reason why Smash 4 might technically be balanced in a sense because you got more good character yeah, matchups. you actually see characters, like, Duck Hunt on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But unfortunately, it still suffers from, like, you know, um, like, low risk, low reward type thing. And that's yeah. why a lot of people probably feel sour about the current meta. Yeah. And um, that... At least for me. I feel like a lot of people like me that kind of came from the background of, like, multiple games, they kind of feel that way. Mm. Like, I still think Smash Bros. is a great game. Yeah. But it's still, like, it lacks in that area. And that's probably why a lot of people com- bitch and complain about it. Yeah. Going to Smash Ultimate, mm. I think <laughs> I think it's a, dream, it's a dream come true, mainly yeah. because, like, it still retains the, you know, the approachable aspects of how to learn a game. Mm-hmm. It's not hard to, like, input anything. Yeah. Which I didn't like about Melee. But I do appreciate my Melee's deep mechanics. Yeah. Because it was intended. Yeah, and I think people fail to realize that the difference between that is like, oh, you, you're trying to alienate people. It's like, no, I'm not saying you should be alienating people. Yeah, <laughs> you should allow people to have like that strategic advantage of like having depth while having accessibility. Mm. And like Smash Four, sure as hell didn't have that depth. Yeah, you know, it was a half step. But I felt like it was a necessary half step mm-hmm. because to me now, looking back in hindsight, it's it's like a beta. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sort. yeah, like yeah. A, like my 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 friend, he also told me like Smash Four is like defensive, right? So a lot of like a lot of things where you, if you wanted to be aggressive, right? So I, I feel like that's a part of the reason why many players didn't like it because it, it was hard to approach. It was hard to get anything started because the game was sold against that naturally. Right. Right. And it, it kind of reminds me of uh, how Street Fighter 4 was, right? Mm. Because <laughs> Street, Fi- Street Fighter 5 is definitely, like, super aggressive, right? Street Fighter 4 was a lot of timeouts and waiting and, you know, 40 second stalemates, right? With both of the players doing this, mm. right? So, um, I think maybe Smash is kind of going through maybe like a similar change in like game, right? So, so from like four to five, it's you know, you have Wii U to Ultimate, right? Where Ultimate it looks a lot faster. There are some characters that apparently are just like dumb now, like Zelda. Like, did you see like the Zelda changes? Yeah, like, um, yeah. <laughs> the changes. Yeah, they well, that's the thing. The whole roster had a universal buff. Yeah. Which is a the like, first sign of like yes. Yeah. <laughs> but you can tell things are for the better when you got characters like Zelda and Ganondorf like yeah. changing. They look really good in action. Yeah. Like that's unheard of. We we all, <laughs> we all thought she's going to be hot trash the next game because like, like again, again cuz of course. Cuz of course like <laughs> they his um Sakurai's previous design philosophy is like, well, I kind of want to make everybody different and yeah. stuff like that. And he does. It does. It definitely shows yeah. through the later iterations. Mm. But now that problem poses, like, well, is this fun? You know, and, and it took time for him to refine that art of yeah. like him balancing out everybody's different attributes. And I feel like now we find those seats, but everybody has their unique, great-looking animations, yeah. as we saw in the trailer. Mm-hmm. But now everybody has a universal buff where, like, yeah. nobody can bitch well, like, oh, my jump squat animation's bad. Like, nobody... <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to complain about that because everybody <laughs> universally has the same jump stop animation, mm-hmm. the same landing mag, yep. um, well, the amount of landing and leg. And, like, now you can use mix and match, like, approaches and stuff like that, like, yeah. competitively based upon your character mm. instead of, like, bitching about your frame data. Yeah. Which is why Zelda is partly scary because yeah. literally <laughs> what holds Zelda back was her frame data. Like, yeah. everything else about her um, design-wise is actually pretty good. Yeah. Like, I, I think um, her moves flow and move eloquently mm. her attacks looks amazing yeah. her damage output is scary like i don't understand like, why a princess like who's like light the magic drop kick like her yeah back and you like can psh. yeah you can really <laughs> die to that at really low percent yeah. and like it, it it looks like you shouldn't be dying to that but like you know it's just character design i guess Anger. but at the same time it, it works <laughs> yeah because like it's zelda you yeah. know for the most part um yeah man like that universal buff really yeah. helped out a lot yeah and i I I think like a lot more fighting games should follow suit with that because especially like like games like Fighters right where there's like five characters in the game <laughs> out of like a forty character cast yeah and a lot of people are like oh I want nerves I want nerves but it's like well why don't you make the other characters better right so the right. people who already play those characters can like not feel alienated right right I feel like nerves kind of go around in a circle and it kind of creates like generations of like top tier fighters between like seasons where it's just like Capcom can be like one day just be like, oh, well, we're tired of seeing Akuma on the screen. Uh, we're going to give Blanca like a bunch of buffs because right. we want to see Blanca in grand finals, right? And why they won't delete Akuma from the game, right? It'll be just better for you to just play Blanca, right? If Akuma's like way down and Blanca's just way up now. 
Yeah, right, the way yeah. I see that, that's like a <coughs> bottleneck effect because then you're just losing characters. Yeah. Left and right. Like, oh, this character's busted. Nerf from This yeah. character's busted. Nerf. Nah, Everybody this character's gets, busted. Yeah, yeah. like, that's, <laughs> that's what, what that was, that's the, because I, n- I noticed the same trend with, like, Smash 4 mm-hmm. and other games I played in the past where, like, you know, um, certain characters um, seem too much popular. You're like, all right, we got to do something about that. Yeah. You know, instead of, like, taking the the overall approach, yeah. um, they kind of just, like, appease little by little and I, and, I, and I think um it, it bites them back in the ass because of that and like um I don't know it's it's weird because you would think nerfing somebody will do do them justice and fix everything yeah where it doesn't <laughs> and like um then you then you got two uh, two arguments on that spectrum mm. you know and uh I I think for me like from my personal experience I yeah. definitely disagree with the, the nerfing aspect I think yeah. pro buffs should happen yeah that's why like again like the universal buff mm. amazing and that's that's probably that's a, a designer standpoint that's your most like fighting games to start off from, yeah. have like a base character that's as good and kind of like buff around that mm. and see like how much fun you could have with that. Yeah, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be balanced. Mm. I feel like the fun factor has to come first. Yeah, that's how you feel like high risk, high reward mm. type of thing versus just like, well, I got this bread and B and B combo. Yeah, do I feel great for that? You know, <laughs> that, that, I know sell players don't feel great about anything. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a whole conver- <laughs> that's a whole conversation for itself. Yeah. Like you know, some people might may like some people like be like, yeah, I, I like it because I'm winning. Yeah, you know, and that's fine. Other people are like, well, I don't know, like I I gotta do it because like, I want to win, but I don't know if I if I feel that way. And you yeah. got people in those camps too. Yeah. So. Yeah, and honestly, like it's it's cool for like character diversity too because all over you know social media, I've seen people be like. Wow, I want to try Ness now. Like, like I want to try, you know, this character now, this character now, right? And it's just like, like you know, that's really cool. Like, we're getting to see more people like actually play the characters that they actually like, mm. and not just being like, oh, I guess I have to play Rosalina now. Like, you know, like yeah, you don't have to, yeah, because Link can play the game too. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Like, yeah. I, I definitely know what you mean. Like, when I look at the trailer, because um, first of all, like I mean Sonic. I've yeah, Sonic. I right. yeah, I I main Sonic since uh, Smash Four. Okay. Uh, well, since Project M, because like the introduction Project M, like it introduced the concept of like <laughs> um, like universal buff yeah. type of thing, and I'm like that's all I I always led that philosophy of like how that balance was, mm-hmm. and like I stuck with Sonic the whole time. I was like, man, I, l- I like Sonic's playstyle. Then when I went to Brawl, um, I didn't really like it too much. I was, I was like, you know, I'll just wait for the next game. Yeah. Then the next game, like Sonic got the buffs. But, like, he also got nerfed. But I still stuck with him because, yeah. like, I still like him as, like, a character. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, like, I think a lot of people are like that, like me, too. Like, like well, I just like them as a character, and mm-hmm. I'll just want them to, like, at least have a chance. Yeah. And I feel like, again, like, going to the new game, like, nobody doesn't really get hurt because everybody has a buff. Yeah. Then, like, um, oh, man, like... <laughs> I'm, I'm still thinking about, like, uh, like how people are still going to, like complain about the game and stuff like that? Well, like I, man, look, <laughs> check it out, right? <laughs> so I, I feel like people are going to complain that, like, they'll probably start complaining at first about, like, how their character's different right. and, and how, like, they're not used to this, they're not used to that. And then, like, the universal uh, changes of the game, like, I heard there's, like, more knockback. Mm. Uh, I got some source that told me that, like, Rage only works, like, past 120 now. Right. Uh, right. Let's see. I, like I, on finishing hits, uh, it zooms in and it slows down. Right. So like a dynamic effect. So people are like, oh, it's weird for like edge guarding or whatever because it messes up the flow of the match. Not entirely because <coughs> I think that's only applicable during uh, 1v1s. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, that'd be a strange argument to pull because like yeah. you're, you guys are already focused on that, that camera angle anyway. Yeah. Right. So like I feel like. Maybe just salty just because you got <laughs> a cinematic <laughs> angle, which uh, I'm not gonna lie, I probably would when like yeah. somebody got like the sick combo and like you f- see the finishing hit. Yeah, you're like, oh man, I don't know, I got I go out like this. Right. You know what yeah, I mean? yeah. But then you see yourself like in these uh these highlight reels yeah. on the internet, and you're like, man, it's that's like, me. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember um there was a like like in Skullgirls when you get a happy birthday, if you kill like the assist in the middle of it, it used to slow down, right? Ah. And players would complain and so they took out the slowdown and now it just a flash happens right but like i think smash should like keep that right because smash is already like a really cool crowd oriented game right. like the game hypes itself up like it, it kind of reminds me of killer instinct in that respect where like you could just have it playing on a tv in a room like like with empty people and like you look at the tv and it's like 
it's like a major's going on. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah. you, you could tell by his game's presentation <coughs> value, like mm-hmm. the the stock counter, the, oh, the confetti yeah. on the screen, too, yeah. dramatic effects and stuff like that. <laughs> Even the when you select your characters and before you enter a game, it has like that Tekken like yeah um, like loading screen. This versus like this, this versus this, this you know, what yeah. I mean? and, and it looks like a dream match come true for yeah. the most part. And like I, you can tell they definitely hit the na- the oh, hammer yeah. head for they, that. They they really tried for this one. They were because they were just like oh, we want to make. The definitive Smash game for veterans and newcomers, and also like uh, I, I forget like what his exact words were, but like Reggie was like talking more about how Nintendo wants to step more into the competitive world of Smash and like mm-hmm. may- help maybe like a little more, which was absolutely a surprise to me because I I thought Nintendo was just like. You know, we make enough money from Smash from just, like, you know, the regular person playing it or buying it. Um, tournament people, do what you want, right? Right. But after all these years, Nintendo has finally seen, like, the efforts of the Smash community. and th- That makes me really happy, right? Um, probably, like, the same for the ARMS community. <laughs> <'Cause> Ho- hopefully. <laughs> yeah, they, they didn't have a, a great yeah. start, unfortunately. Yeah. My, to me, part of me... I, not to get off topic, but I feel like yeah. part of the reason was is like they weren't at their launch window. Yeah, they the alarm should have been out when um so the Switch came out, not yeah. like the summer of it where other games were coming out. <laughs> you know, because the tune was literally around the corner and just yeah. kind of overshadowed that. Yeah. Um, uh, and there's a few other things going on with the Switch as well, mm-hmm. and that was unfortunate because I think Arms is a really cool game. I th- I like the yeah. concept of it. Yeah. It was a shame that it's kind of locked behind the wall. Yeah. Like and it, it, yeah, like there's a character with five jumps and two air dashes in that game. Yeah, like I want to play that game. There's a <laughs> there's a lot of um, neat things you can do. Yeah, um, and I, I'm quite sure if you talk to the arms community, like they'll they can like talk forever about like the tech you can do in that game. Yeah, you know, because I used to I don't I don't I've not been well acclimated to the arms yeah. community because I didn't know there was a thing until I went to Smash Splash. Mm-hmm. But um, when I when I saw them in person, I was like, man, they're very like passionate. And I was yeah. like, man, this is easily be like the whole Nintendo crew. You got the arms, you got the Splatoon, you got the Smash. Yeah. If you unify that within the esports sector, that's easy. Yeah. But like again, like Nintendo has to like capitalize on a hit with the orange hot type yeah. of deal. If they don't, then you know th- that's why the communities get all separated. Yeah. You know, there should not be a reason why these communities are separated when they're all on the same console. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, Spl- like I need a Splatoon saddle. Oh, I got switches anyway. Like. That should not be a problem yeah. like a cross promotion. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. venues teals and like teals and venues should take initiative for that. Mm. Where like um if they know another game's hot in the same system, mm. like you guys gotta like cross promote that. Like I lo- I locate some resources. This is like help promote both scenes. Because it, it does nothing but grow the scene. Yeah. For the most part. That's why it's kinda unfortunate Pokin kinda got shafted because <laughs> Oh Pokin. Because yeah. how, how do you feel about Pokin as a game, bro? I think it's a it's actually a solid game. Like yeah. I don't it's not it's, it's not, it's super not rock, paper, scissors. No, it is. Um, <laughs> it is. <laughs> no, it, it is. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not gonna lie, but it's like a yeah. it's like a good type of rock, paper scissors. Like I feel yeah. good when I execute a well thought out strategy. It's yeah. Like, okay, I I I'm maintaining neutral. Mm. Um, I guard I I I forget what that mechanic's called when you kinda like um uh, face ca- face shift. No, no, no. Uh, uh, it's like a uh, focus. The ten, like you, uh, the you do, c- like counter, uh, counter attack, counter attack. Counter attack yeah, I think it's just called. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's called uh, when when you like hold it and then you dash forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it was yeah. Street Fighter Four. Had it's that. like so F A D C. Focus yeah, attack. Yeah, it's kind of like that. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of. I forget what it's called in spoken. I yeah. love doing that in neutral and like um, winning neutral with that <laughs> because like then like you got so many things going on. Like yeah. it doesn't have to be like super aggro in your face type of thing. Like it is, but it isn't. Like yeah. I feel like it's a nice balance of it. Like mm. it's his own game, and I yeah. and I respect Pokemon for that. Yeah. It's just like a lot of people are like, well, it's not Smash. Where <laughs> FGC side is like, well, it's not like it's a not fighting Tekken. game. Yeah, yeah so like <laughs> it's literally shattered yeah. by everybody, and it's unfortunate. It, it, yeah. it could thrive along with like any other Switch game. It's yeah. just like people just don't want to give it a chance. Yeah, you know, and and I I think that's just like a I think that's just like a not even like a fighting game wide problem. This is like a gamer wide problem. Where yeah. Like, <laughs> we we want new things, but also we want them to stay the same. Like, it doesn't even make sense. Yeah, <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> like, like um, let's say like going going back to Smash. Like, mm-hmm. let's say if Melee actually had a sequel to this game, like yeah. it had um what the mechanics were in Melee, but like you know, and, and like well, a better character roster. Yeah. I bet you people will still be playing Melee. Yep, because that's how they are. Like. Well, I'm not saying that's how they all are. Like, I don't want to make a blanket statement, but there's some people in the community that's like, I don't want to transition from everything else. I'm just yeah. used to it. Yeah. You know, that's that's how it is. You never play this match community. Or like what the Waluigi situation is happening right now. 
<laughs> like, yeah, I, I, I feel I feel the pain for them. Yeah. But, like, let's say Waluigi did get in and somebody yeah. else did get in. Everybody else will be still bitching about, oh, this character did get in. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah. it's never a, a crowd-pleasing thing. You just have to, like, just do what the developer does. Because yeah. uh, at the end of the day, he's going to receive heat for no matter what. Yeah. You know, and I, and I feel for Sakurai. Like, man, you can't please everybody. But you did the best you could by having the whole roster from viewers games encapsulated in one game. Yeah. You know, and um, now it's just like, I'm I'm glad his health is doing okay. Oh yeah, like, you, yeah you can like, definitely look at him and tell from the like, footage from the Invitational. He's yeah. he looks really good. Like yeah. he he actually looks younger. Again, yeah. I don't know how he's in, <laughs> how he aging. Like I don't think he's aging at all. I feel like he dipped in a final youth and just like it's that it's that Nintendo magic, bro. Uh, <laughs> they they got they got him found the youth in the offices. I, I think that's some uh, Nintendo Illuminati. A Nintendo <laughs> Illuminati. Going on. <laughs> Yeah, but, but uh, speaking speaking of suspicious things, that recently today actually, this isn't like anything like long running or anything. But mm. on Twitter, like uh, we were saw like the beef between uh, Sonic and, uh, Zero. and Zero. Yep. Yeah, Zero. Yeah, Zero. I I forget how it started. Like I like I'm like going back to the tweets, and like I, I think like Sonic was just like you know I think I want to try playing Smash or whatever, and he like poked at zero a little bit mm. and it was kind of like i guess it was kind of like throwing a match into a room like full of like gases and like there's like gasoline on the ground because <laughs> he was zero like immediately went off and he was just like no you're yeah. not coming in here <laughs> this is our community <laughs> like what, what do you think do you think do you think sonic could like just come in and just start running stuff in like a few months like honestly if he put Work with them, especially since because you mentioned the kill sage yeah. is um is also his training partner. Mm -hmm. He can easily become like somewhat of a threat. Yeah. Um, because not only because of the resources he has available to him, it's because of the way he is currently. Like he yeah. knows how to train, how to work, work yeah. for a victory. He knows how to like learn. Yeah. A lot of players nowadays, especially the newcomers, yeah, have a hard time learning. Like they think they're learning. Like oh, I'm getting good. I'm getting good. Then they they show up to bracket and they get bodied. And they're like, well, I'm giving up. Yeah, because I they'll, they'll act like oh I put my heart and soul to a game, and like I'm not getting any results. He's not like that. John yeah. Fox is not gonna crack down like that. I cannot see him like shake getting shaken up by anybody, yeah. not anybody from our scene. Yeah, because I know FGC is like a different level of a beast of like how people oh, get shaken it's up. Crazy, I, man. Like I I I can admit as a Smash here, yeah. like I we're kind of soft compared to everybody <laughs> else. Yeah, like I've seen some shit in the FGC. It's like man, I, I don't know how I'll handle that. Yeah, like I I remember going to a Tekken tournament mm. and like I felt kind of intimidated by people because like they're kind of I'm not saying they're rowdy, yeah. but like you know, they they, they uh they're they, pretty they, rowdy. Well, yeah. not pretty rowdy, but I meant like they're pretty uh, I guess just aggro. Yeah, like they get their their aggro and their approaches, their aggro like how they 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 talk mm -hmm. to other players, like in the hype sense. But at the same yeah. time, it's just a weird. It's just very intimidating and like in your face, right? Yeah, like 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 because when you go to, I remember like the first tournament I went to, I was like just completely, like, flabbergasted at, like, how much yelling was going on and how much, like, you know, like, pure cadamery was going on. Like, it, it, yeah, it's it's a weird force because it doesn't feel mean. It's mm. just it's just big, yeah. right? <laughs> You're just like, whoa. Big boys. Yeah, yeah big yeah. boys. Uh, like, yeah. whoa. That's, what I, that's how I feel. <laughs> like, I yeah. remember, um, actually, another, another cool, what I noticed different from the smashing to mm. FGC uh, Cause when we call when you play when you guys play casuals we yeah. call it friendlies. Yeah. You know, no, I look at it, I was like, what the hell, casuals? Like, <laughs> casuals. Yeah. And I look at it, I was like, it sounds a more sophisticated term. Like, yeah. Friendly sounds a little bit kiddie. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh no, I think I think the Smash community has some some cool terms like yeah. uh What's what's another term? <laughs> I don't even know, bro. Like like I remember there was one term that we were the FGC was just making fun of like relentlessly. I forget what it was, but. Um, <laughs> like, like, there's a lot of like e's at the like i e s at the end of like <laughs> a yes. lot of smash terms. Like, uh, like I think the one of the only ones we have is like meaties, right? But then like, uh, oh, like meaty uh, punishes or something like that. No, or no, or no, like, like just like, like just like, j just like the 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 suffix e's, right? Where uh, it's just it has like that that kitty like sound to it, right? Okay. Yeah, but um. I don't know. I, I think I think that the Smash community and FGC community, uh, for years we've been separate, right? Mm -hmm. um, I think games like Smash Ultimate and pretty much every 
made <laughs> FGC game made after Street Fighter Five. <laughs> Um, is starting to meld uh, the communities together because we're kind of like switching uh, like game designs, right? right. So g games like Blaze Blue Cross Hack Battle and Dragon Ball Fighters, right? Two complete examples of what I'm talking about, right? Um, it's easier, right? There aren't like DP motions in either of them, right? There's still half circle motions, but uh, you know, half circle motions are easy, right? Right, right? But there's one button DPs, there's one button DHCs. Uh, Everything is, a, like, a lot easier to do, right? And I feel like that's how Smash, like, uh, that's also, like, a direction Smash is stepping in, where it's just like, okay, we're we're making our game easier to play. However, the decision-making and, like, the on-the-spot, like, thinking, like, that still remains the same, mm -hmm. right? Right. And, you know, I feel like since both communities are moving forward in kind of, like, the same direction... Eventually, we'll start to converge, right? And maybe one day, right, you know, people, you know, just be like, oh, do you play fighting games? Like, yeah, I play Smash. It's like, oh, yeah, cool. Right? Instead of being like, oh, yeah, I play Smash. It's like, no, like, do you play fighting games? Right? Right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, no, yeah. I definitely know what you mean. I that I felt that atmosphere um, when I started back in, like, 2012. Because mm. like, I, I used to play Marvel 3 casually before, yeah. like, I, I realized I couldn't, like, maintain the the how the meta was progressing at, at yeah. that rate back then yeah and then when ultimate came out, i was like all right i'm done <laughs> but, but but yeah like i realized that you said like the as an accessibility factor for like you know dbz f mm. dragon ball fighters and um uh, cross tag yeah. like there's not that much motions going on like you you, be you basically lay out the the plan the extra combos yeah and basically flow like that you don't have to worry about uh, technical execution i mean it might be once in a while yeah not a when I compared back then, where like everything was so technical, mm. and like you couldn't really like flow like how other other top players flow. Yeah. Like I, I felt like because of that, like that was just a barrier entry for me to like yeah. get better. Yeah. Um. Now, like it's it's a complete opposite, and this that's just why I kind of like that design yeah. aspect, especially in Smash Smash Ultimate. Mm -hmm. That's probably why I feel like it might just be the best Smash game. Yeah. Because accommodating for advanced mechanics mm -hmm. without compromising its accessibility factor. Yeah. And like that's, as you said, it's proven. So far, and like, look at look at the numbers for DBZ. Yeah, like I, off the charts. They're off the charts. Like, <laughs> it, it it surprised me. I can I because I know it's like I love Arc Systems as mm -hmm. a, as a developer. I was like, man, like I, I can see DBZ taking off because yeah. it, it's rewarding. Yeah. Uh, the presentation value, of course, is mm -hmm. over the top. You know, like everybody likes that anime type, like yeah. you know, um, like ah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The the anime yeah. like you know screaming and stuff like that, and it, it, it suits our current demographic. Yeah. But the fact that it's accessible without compromising anything. Yes. The, the depth of it mm. definitely goes to show that goes a long way. And I think Sakurai made note of that yeah. and just went with it. He's like, oh, I, uh, I'm going to do that too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot of, yeah. a lot of like, that's a lot, a lot of design concepts of that. I think Skullgirls too. Um, yeah. Another notable fighting game that I yeah. feel like it also should get some more love, but it's yes, unfortunate. It that yes, it should. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it was actually at the forefront of the yeah. design aspect because yeah. I, I think it, I know that game has an infinite prevention system, yes, so like a, you had to yeah. think around that. Yeah, you know, and um, and sound effects, of, of course, like yeah, uh, he kind of showcased that really well. Girls player in yeah. the world, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it, it has a yeah, it has IPS and it has like an undizzy bar, right? So even if you work around IPS, right, like there's like a certain point where you have to stop hitting him and let them play the game, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, and you know. And I I I like that too. And really, like the only the only part that I'm kind of like getting heat from a lot of my other uh, fighting game friends with um, on this uh, subject is like, you know, if games are simpler, they're just like, oh well, you know, it doesn't have any depth, right? Mm. Or like it's getting like to the point where the game wants me to do this, right? But I I can't not do that, right? So right. An, an example is like is like in cross tag battle, right? When you hold forward, like you dash, mm. right? There's no walking, right? So a lot of players, myself included, when I first heard about it, right, um, before I actually like put my hands on the game, <laughs> um, I was like, well, how am I gonna like just move around like like only a little bit, right? Like the game just is just gonna make me move forward, like or like uh you know, the the combo system in cross tag, right? Where it's like it's really simple and it's really like straightforward, but also like I, I can't be creative, like I can't like 
you know, throw them this way and then convert off of that because the game just naturally does not want me to go in that direction or, like, something like that. And what I have to say to that is, like, um, and I had this conversation with Ryan, uh, too, is that uh, for fighting games to move forward, uh, we need to have, uh, like, entry-level fighting games, I think, right? Like, a couple. Like, I, I think the, the analogy you use is, like, for baseball, right? So you have you have little league, then you have softball, and then mm-hmm. you have like actual baseball, right? Like those two pre ones, like no one in baseball complains about. Oh, there's too many like softball games going on, right? Because like people play that and they're just like, oh, well, you know, how would I do in baseball, right? I'll play that, right? I feel like games like Cross Tag Fighters, Smash Ultimate may be uh that kind of game. I'm not sure, but well, well that's about to see. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, I, yeah it, it's, it hasn't even like come out yet. <laughs> but um it, it it's like the type I feel like it's falling on those those categories of games where it's like it's super easy and anyone can play it and mm-hmm. anyone can be like okay at it and then they'll be like, "Oh, well, I wonder how I'll do in Blaze Blue Central Fiction, right? Or mm-hmm. Guilty Gear or Street Fighter Third Strike, right? And I f- I feel like that's a good gateway right because right now the only the only way to get someone into the fgc is to throw like these hard fighting games at them Mm. and tell them that they're gonna cut that they're gonna lose a lot right and that they just have to keep going and keep believing right right but they're spending so much time trying to learn how to play the game period right that fighting somebody else is like a whole other world, right? Also, keep in mind the financial <laughs> yeah. investment too. Like, yeah, why would, <laughs> DLC why would, characters. Why would, why would I spend? Money, <laughs> yeah, why would I spend money to get bodied? Why well, I could spend money in a game that's like relatively easy to enter, yeah. and like I'll at least have a good time. Yeah. You know, versus just like, well, I'm not saying you can't have a good time losing, but it takes a lot it to takes, enjoy that. It takes a certain kind yeah. of person to yeah. have fun losing. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Yeah, most people just want to pick up and play like i want to do this and that and that's it because yeah. like video games were meant with intentions to have fun yeah and like enjoy yeah. it right out the box and that still should hold true in that design <laughs> mentality <laughs> right like, yeah it yeah. seems like fighting games are getting away from that a little bit like, yeah, yeah, yeah as soon like, as you open the game you go alive like it's, yeah, it's, it's like this sucks man yeah, <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's, it's literally dark souls mentality <laughs> yeah you either love getting your ass kicked or you just or you, you just hate you it ain't about or that you life, hate it. Yeah, yeah like i don't want to play it i hate this <laughs> yeah, like, because yeah. um, I, cause I know what I saw. It's weird because I'm definitely one of those people. I, well, of course, I'm one of those people that likes getting my ass kicked because, like, yeah. I, I use that to well, motivation. Like, you know, what, I'm going to learn this. Mm-hmm. Then after I learn, I feel the gratification of it. And that's yeah. why I got my money's worth. Yeah. Other people's like, I want it now. Yeah. You know, and people can say, like, oh, quit being a baby, but they, they do still have a right to feel yeah. that way because, again, it's their life. Yeah. They want to spend it the way they want to, you know, mm-hmm. and that's why. We as people should have a middle ground and be like, you know what? I'll meet you halfway. Yeah. You can get your ass kicked, but I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you get some things. Yeah. You know what I mean, and that's why the accessibility comes in. Yeah, and then know? then you make these kind of games where the accessibility is really high, right? Yeah. And and I say that it's a problem that you know these games don't have dev, but then like on the other hand, it's really only a problem to those of us that have been playing these hard fighting games for the past like 25 plus years, right? Right. It only matters to us that they don't have any debt, right? Right. It does not matter to the crowd that we are trying to attract, right? We need new people, right? We we need, uh, what's the word for it? Sus- sustainability, right? Mm, right. Right. Like, that's important to anything, right? And uh, fighting games need to get with that one way or another. And we've tried to teach people hard fighting games, and obviously, the <laughs> like it's talking about like people have like jobs and hobbies, other hobbies like they're that they're just like, well, I don't want to sit here and study like Chun Li's like standing medium kick for three hours, like I don't right. do that, right? Yeah. But they want to see immediate results. Yeah, you show them arms. Yeah, or you you show them something like that where it's like, yeah, you can just like do that and do like two hundred damage, and they're just like, <gasps> wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. It. That's why a lot of game, especially game design nowadays, everything's flashy. Yeah. I notice like how the previous fighting games, mm-hmm. um, their specials require you to do a lot, right? Yeah. A lot of it wasn't automated like it is now. Yeah. Nowadays, you see the special, it takes up, 
it's like a cutscene. Yeah. That it's interactable. <laughs> then like after that, all right, the the cutscenes now. I'm seeing myself yeah. getting by it. I go back into action. Yeah. You know, like everything's like more cut to the point, but yeah. without like the extra inputs. Yeah. Yeah, it, I I noticed because of that, <laughs> <laughs> it's already like self gratifying. Like, like, oh man, I did this cool ass combo, and like it looks all cinematic. Yeah, actually, Naruto Ninja Storm is a good example. Of that, Dude, too. Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm, bro. Like, I I get. It. Oh, uh, hello to Moha Five Blade. He's one of our um uh, early uh podcast stream monsters. How you doing, bro? But um, yeah, Naruto Ultimate Ninja Storm is like totally. <laughs> it, it is. It is absolutely that idea where it's just like I'm going to press square and my character's going to do like four flips on you, pull out knives and slice you with fire and then like trap you in a the jutsu. <laughs> You're just like, bro, like I'm playing soccer. Like I don't understand. Yeah. <laughs> like I didn't even do anything. I'm just pressing like square, right? Or like triangle, triangle, circle gets you like the the universe exploding, like, yeah. but, it, but it works. So. <laughs> yeah, like, but it's cool. Like, yeah, it's, that's, that, you can tell like the animators are they're, they're getting paid well. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they get paid. I, well I for hope, that, yeah, because like that's that's way above and beyond like yeah what we should get as for fighting game. In my opinion, I feel like that's a little bit too much because like it immediately rewards you, and I, I'm the, I'm the, I'm the type that wants it just to be reward as you learn. Yeah, but at the same time, again, accommodation. Yeah, for the most part, and like I can easily show it to like you know. Kids off the street and be like, oh look, I'm playing this this cool fighting. I'm like, like it all like Injustice for yeah. example. Yeah. A no- notable IPs. Yeah. They got the specials. Like you got Batman with his, his car coming uh, through, like shooting people. Yeah. From, <laughs> from the sky, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, uh, like players like us are like, oh man, I can't wait to this cutscene ends because yeah. I still want to. Because I, I want to play the game. Yeah, I want to play right? the game. Right. Like like I'm yeah. paying attention to my knockdown right I, now. I know, right? <laughs> but but <laughs> as, as that that, ca- that that casual person is like, whoa, what the fuck? This is amazing. Like right, this like, dude just came flew out of the sky? up to the moon and yeah, flew like to the moon. yeah. <laughs> like I don't like like that's 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 the great approach because yeah. back then like because I know when I was growing up, um, I look at the characters like I'll play them based upon how they look, how they uh, animate, how cool yeah. they look. Yeah. And I feel like that still holds true to this day. Yeah. They don't look cool doing it. What's the point? Like, like playing it? Yeah. Like you, you got to be stylish. Yeah. All right. We we all learned that from Dante. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like we don't we we couldn't comprehend the concept of like tears back then. Like, yeah. Well, back when you when you first start like fighting games. Yeah. Because like you just do everything based upon aesthetic. Yeah. And I feel like I still kind of holds true to like certain players. Yeah. Who are like well I just like this character and in the fight they they probably like carry that character as yeah. well and they don't really care about the tier doesn't yeah. matter. Um, certain certain people on the top of the tier list probably do have like that coolness factor. Mm-hmm. Like, I know Dante is still uh, yeah <laughs> threat in yeah, NBC. Boy. Yeah, <laughs> but at the same time he does have his, uh, the pleasing aesthetic. He still yeah. has his DMC three look, even though it kind of looks bad in the engine. Yeah, but like <laughs> it still kind of flows well. Yeah. Um, the combos well. He goes with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's glue. He's I love characters like that where there's. They're just like you, they just go with anyone. Like I think like Ruby is that in cross tag. Anyone with Ruby is top tier. Uh, anyone with Kibu or Cell is top tier. And fighters like you play Krillin, cool. Let's put him with Cell. Krillin's yeah. top tier now. <laughs> Basically, you hang yeah. with the cool boys. You are the cool boys. You are the cool yeah. boys. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I I definitely picked uh my team in fighters, which is like a uh, team go on Piccolo sixteen. Off of aesthetic and just because I like those characters, mm. um, I named it Team Real Dads, and I have <laughs> not, I have not played <laughs> any other team because I think it's just so cool. But um, you know, they, like beginners want to do that, right? They want to pick up a fighting game and they want to pay. They want to play like the big strong dude with the, these giant weapons, or they want to play like the small girl with the dainty like sparkles or whatever, right? And they want to be like, okay, I, I'm able to stand a chance against the other, like, 20-something characters in this game, mm. right? And, you know, I really do feel that fighting games are starting to get better at moving towards that. Like, we're not quite there yet, right? But I feel like one day, like, a fighting game is just going to be released where everybody knows it, everybody can play it, uh, the characters are all balanced, you can go to Grand Finals at EVO with any character you want, right? But... Um, but also there's always going to be the thing where, like, uh, certain characters are going to be better than other ones, right? Because there's always going to be differences. There's always going to be weaknesses and strengths that each character has that some characters may cover, uh, worse or better than other ones, right? So, but, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Fighting games, fighting games are good. 
Yeah, <laughs> Friday was great. Yeah, they uh, they gave <laughs> they gave me life, man. Like um, I I've been a combo breaker. I've been a CEO. Yeah. Um, what other kind of uh, fighting games are you uh, like a fan of, or like do you play besides um, Smash? So Tekken was my Tekken. first like fighting game. Mm-hmm. I I I loved as a as a, yeah. a child growing up because yeah. play, PlayStation One was my first console mm-hmm. I ever owned. So Tekken Three was yeah. the first game I start off from. Yeah. Like I I was amazed by the graphics. Yeah. The CGI cutscenes are still amazing to this day. They're in my opinion. still great. Yeah. <laughs> the the storyline was actually pretty good too. Like I think yeah. everything about Tekken Three was like. The, where it kind of got his kicking point, yeah. for the most part. Um, <coughs> but yeah, besides Tekken, uh, I like Street Fighter, but I don't know, man. Like, I, I don't really have a particular favorite Street Fighter. I like Third Strike because I've seen, like, the videos online. Yeah. And, I, and I like the technicality of it, but yeah. that was when I got older. Yeah. But my favorite Street Fighter growing up was probably either Alpha or Puzzle Fighter. Yeah. Which is, I don't know if those <laughs> are even good games. Well, I, I think they're kind of, like, underrated <coughs> for mm-hmm. the most part. Um, nobody really talks about them. Yeah. I, I was here, is our Third Strike? Um, arcade edition for St- Street Fighter 2 or Street Fighter 4 Yeah, for the most part. Uh, I forget what other games I like. Maybe Soul Calibur. Soul Calibur, yeah. Soul, Soul Calibur, I think, man, I, that game needs me more, more love. Hope, I can't wait to try it out whenever the demo like, comes out. Soul Calibur is 6, yeah. 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 Uh, what else? Of course, I like Arc System games, so mm. uh, Persona 4 Arena, yep. uh, Guilty Gear. Persona 4 Arena, that game is so good. And I love it, and I'm I'm so mad that it never got the chance to shine. I know, cause like it, it was it was really good, right? Like it had like a, a cool mechanic with the Persona cards, right? Um, each character worked differently with how they used their Persona. Some characters barely needed their Persona at all, um, but like man, like I don't know, it was, it was just like an example of a game that was just too. I don't. I don't know. I don't really know what Maybe happened. Maybe it was news. Yeah. Maybe it, it. It did kind of <laughs> came at a weird time. Yeah. But I kind of. I felt like if it came at this generation, it would have popped off. Especially after Persona oh, Five success. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Easy. That's what I'm hoping they make a Persona Five Arena. Persona Five Arena would be lit. Hopefully, I'm. I'm praying. You realize like, like Anne would have like whip normals. Bro. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 and like Yusuke has long ass swords. We'd have like big ass normals, bro. <laughs> like that'd be great. But um yeah, speaking of like fighting games and like those type of ones coming out, like, there's a lot of crossover ones coming out right now. Um, it seems like the big yeah. theme of this year, this crossover anything. Yeah, just any. I'm I'm surprised Ryu isn't in all of them. Yeah. <laughs> all right, cause it, yeah. it's our crossover king, bro. But um, yeah, like I I'm I'm looking forward to seeing like what developers are gonna do. Are you uh are you, yeah. I don't know if you keep up with a uh, fighting layer ex. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. another game I kind of have in my radar because mm-hmm. I played the uh, the beta and yep. I was actually pretty decent at it because yep. like it had more accessible combos. Yep, which is another, of course, is another good design perk for a player that comes from a, a different yeah. um, fighting background different that's nine. able to like yep. compete with like higher up players. Mm-hmm. You know, um, and yeah, it, it's weird because I, I think they were they were the Street Fighter EX yeah. developers right before they kind of went their own way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I can see that game have like a niche following. Like, I don't know how big it can get. I don't think it's going to get as big as, like, DBZ and stuff like yeah. that. But, like, it's going to be, like, on the side. It's kind of like... Actually, another good game that's on the side is Vampire Savior or yeah. uh, uh, Darkstalkers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, oh, another, Darkstalkers. That that game deserves yeah. a remake, honestly. Really another does. game that's kind of, like, a high niche following. Yeah. That whenever I go to, like, Big Tarns, like, Combo Breaker, mm-hmm. it's always popping yeah. for some reason. Um, yeah, it's... It's a lot of like weird like niche audiences yeah. like that's going on right now. Um, I I definitely feel like because of this day and age with like the popular Discord and stuff like that, mm-hmm. it's just prone to get bigger. Yeah. There's hopefully like FGC is kind of like more. They have like a space for that that panel. Yeah. Where like how Combo Breaker does it, we're like, okay, we have the main stage, then we have our separate stages, yeah. and like kind of like just keep growing like a medium. People get curious, like, oh, what game you guys are playing? And you see everybody like popping off in the corners, like, all right, I gotta watch this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's that's how you, that's how you get people in. Yeah. Show them the excitement. Yeah. 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 The the excitement and the the, the pure hype and spirit of the FGC is like a big part of the reason why I've been in it and I've stayed around for six years, right? Because mm. You you go to a tournament and it's almost akin to like walking like into your into your family's house after a long day of work or you know 
walking into a classroom for like your classmates, like you, you feel like you're home in a sense, right. right? Because you're with all these players who play the same game you do, right? Who complain about the same characters you yeah. do, right? <laughs> and you know, you all meet up and you all fight each other, and it's 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 great. It's like no no other community is like it, and I really hope that people will be able to come and share that experience. Right, more in the future, because like the the entire world needs to know that like fighting games are like just the go for all. Yeah, it's <laughs> such a it's a pleasing yeah. spectator thing. Yeah, you know, it's good to watch. Like, it, yeah, especially like a lot like, again like a lot of design aspects are just making it more spectator friendly. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, uh, it's only a matter of time. Yeah, you know, actually another cool crossover would be of like what if like Ninja from Fortnite mm. started saying like, "Hey, you should just start watching like these fighting game streams and like yeah. another good like pro cross promotion thing." Yeah. Like imagine like Fortnite had his own like fighting game. Oh, dude! Like, do you imagine like on that? each character has like different kind of like building like uh like they incorporate building into it. Yeah. And like you can like you can like build on the stage and then like jump on it and then shoot a projectile down and then like. Right. <laughs> I, I don't know. Like, uh, I can see that. So or, weird. Or, or, <laughs> or any other popular player that's from like an MMO or uh, or the MOBA mm -hmm. scenes and stuff like that. Like Overwatch will probably be a cool ass IP that has a fighting game element to oh, it. Oh, dude. I can imagine those characters immediately will type call. Oh, yeah. Or if you take like Ooh, that League of Legends and make a fighting game from that. Mm. I'm telling you, man, that, that will sell. Yeah. It's going to sell from. Oh, this is a casual standpoint, but you already know the hardcore goons. Be like, all right, I gotta see what's popping with this. Yeah, you know what I mean. And, then, and they'll they'll Cause, definitely cause like they'll come for the money, and yeah. then like the, the 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 casual whatever is they'll follow them and you know latch on to whatever game they're playing. Right? Yeah, and yeah. I I definitely feel like for for a fighting game community like step up like mm -hmm. they need that type of like cross promotion from like yeah. other casual scenes, you know, yeah. but uh. Seems oh, like Chris Chrisman Core LOL in the chat says there's actually already a fan made League Fighter. I did not know that. Oh, um, I I gotta check that out. That actually yeah. sounds pretty hype. Like yeah. I don't play League much, but I do. I admire their character design, and yeah. I think I probably pick up a few characters just because they look aesthetically pleasing. Yeah, yeah I think that's that's a thing that like kind of happens with me with a lot of like PC games too, where I'll say like World of Warcraft characters or Hero of the Storm characters or something like that, and I'm like, man. I really wish I could like <laughs> interact with these characters, but I just don't know how to play the game that they're in. Right. <laughs> right yeah, I know. I, I definitely yeah. feel like, man, this character looks cool, but I, I'm not like this genre is not my cup of tea. Yeah. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. I would like to see them in Undertake, and I love it when people cross promote that. Yeah. To like another genre. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think I think game companies are actually uh starting to be really good at advertising their characters and their IPs more like like our system works is just on fire right now like they're just like they're they're posting me to me on they're like uh, <laughs> they I think Arc Systems is kind of like platinum games of game design for fighting games. Uh, honestly but yeah like yeah. I, don't, I, don't think, <laughs> I don't think they made a bad fighting game per se like they they probably have made questionable decisions in yeah. the past yeah. but like I, I I probably would take a safe bet like if I had to live in an island full of like, uh, games from a particular game company who would I live with for fighting games Gonna take Arc Systems because like most of the games are pretty consistent. Um, Capcom probably would have been the next yeah. thing going on. <laughs> mm -hmm. After that, I don't know what other fighting game developer that's like very prominent. Maybe uh, SNK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not really good for like Fatal Fury and yeah. like um, she, she, <laughs> King of Fighters. King I was gonna of say fighters. Street of Fighters. Street of Fighters. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go yeah. Street of Fighters. Do you know how hype uh, King of Fighters uh, versus Street Fighter? <laughs> crossover will be. Oh be, my that'd god! That'd be nice, bro. Actually, I see. Uh, HNK was, was Arc's this game. Oh, yeah. was it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but um, yeah, the Arc system works. Like, yeah, they're at the point where, cause whenever like I watch E3 every year, if I see something with Platinum Games on it, like I like immediately write it down. Is it like, immediately? Yeah. It's, it's like, pop. <laughs> yeah, like it's like gold. Yeah, Arc mm -hmm. system could like yeah, like I'm like yo, that's fire. Like they don't even show the gameplay, <laughs> but like like our. They could Arxis could announce some weird shit like they were like oh yeah we're gonna make it like a beverage crossover fighter and there's <laughs> like, <laughs> like Pepsi versus like Seven Up and like hell yeah hell yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I don't uh, know what they're, you're they're great they know how to sell their yeah. product they know how to deliver mm -hmm. they 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 they're uh, masters their own craft they're, oh yeah it definitely shows especially with the recent games that, that came out oh, you know God. and <laughs> I I it's nothing but props from here like I yeah. I, I I assume in the future. Wherever they go, it's just, it's just going to be good for them. Oh, yeah. I'm just hoping they kind of get in the, in the better, like, limelight of, like, their own IP. Like, I kind of yeah. want them to kind of flesh out 
their IP a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So let them know like we're about business. Yeah. Because I, I do appreciate like DBZ, um, like how they develop it and all that. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the best way to help them. Well, help Namco with their their uh, their IPs. Yeah. But like they need to start to like um, have more of their own identity as well. Yeah. You know, hopefully uh, we start to see like maybe like a third game of some sort. Mm -hmm. uh, a game that's not quite guilty here, but not like quite like a. Uh, Blaze Blue. Yeah. Right. yeah. Something that meets the middle, kind of like DBZ. Yeah. But. Because I, I feel I feel like it's it's because Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue complement each other like really well, right? Because you you have the like. The uh like the clearly like Japanese inspired like whatever right and they right. have the super Americanized like rock like whatever yeah. right that a lot of people play here in the states, right? But I don't I'm what what would I'm wondering what the style of that third game would be in right like because Blaze was all like about like the elegance or whatever, and then like Guilty Gear is all like the rough and tough or whatever, but like uh, yeah they they do actually they do need a third game to, like. Make like a kind of like, like what like cross a trinity did, of yeah, but like not what all that because I I I honestly felt like they could have benefited from like having like guilty gear characters within mm -hmm. that kind of yeah. setting. But also, I guess this is a misstep. I don't I don't know what they have in the future planning for that. Yeah, but like maybe at the same time, like maybe it's just me looking at. I was like, man, I'm just more of a guilty gear person than yeah. like <laughs> <Blaze's Blue. laughs> So maybe maybe it's that. Yeah. But I do feel like uh, they if they ended the game with their with the middle ground met. Mm -hmm. With their own IP, I feel like they can definitely, like, you know, become more well-known. Yeah. Instead of just, like, using other, like, IPs. Yeah. So then they're like, oh, that's Arc Systems. Like, they, they're known for this IP along with, like, using other people's IPs. Yeah. Because, you know, like, I don't know, like, I never really known Arc Systems for their work before, like, seeing Persona 4 Arena, to be yeah. honest. Like, I, I've i heard of, like, Guilty Gear, but who the hell is Arc System? Yeah. Because, like, their their logo, if you look at their game company logo, it's, it's not a, really... So it's a red square with white... Yeah, it's kind of... <laughs> it kinda looks like hard. this. <laughs> it's kind of hard to, like, distinguish that, because, yeah. like, especially as a casual, like, who the fuck's Arc Systems? <laughs> you know? Especially yeah. if they make Dragon Ball Z, too, like, people really think Namco made it because, like, it's their IP. Yeah. But they don't really know the, the true The actual developer, yeah. Of, like, who's developing this stuff. That's yeah. why I'm like, I'd rather have them work, continue working on their own IP and kind of, mm -hmm. like, promote that. Yeah. You know? But maybe this is an inner game developer, I mean, like, trying to promote that. Because yeah. a, a lot of people might say, like, they could argue, be like, well, they're fine. They're, they're a perfect spot. Yeah. Because I'm not, they're, they're not wrong. Yeah. Like, they're they're chilling right now, but yeah. they can definitely... They just gotta like, solidify it. They definitely have to, like, have yeah. that divide and conquer approach if yeah. they want to keep up with, like, the gaming meta game. Because, mm -hmm. like, you don't want to fall behind because... You, not, especially not developers. Now. Yeah, like, everyone's just rushing forward, right? Like, Namco definitely, like, they have, like, Tekken Cross Street Fighter in their back pocket, which yeah. I feel like is a bomb that they're just, they've just been working on. Oh, like, it, but, uh, it's it's going to drop they're, hard. They're just going to toss it out and be like, here you go. You remember this? <laughs> I was actually yeah. hearing um, development on that, like, not too long ago. I don't know if you keep up with, I'm quite sure you might keep up with, like, Maximilian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, yeah. I think there's been talks about that. I was like, man, like that will be a nice, interesting drop after like the Soul Calibur Four, yeah. like hype kind of dies down. Yeah, you know, but Namco doesn't really have nothing to worry about at this point. Yeah, yeah. So no, no. And I, I think they're still developing. They're helping develop uh, Smash Brothers Ultimate, right? Still, are they? I I I never checked. I I I mean, that'd be cool. <laughs> That'd be nice. Like, but at the same time, yeah. it looked like they did because like some of the design approaches. Kind of seems like a stem from Nam Tekken. Namco yeah. yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I might have to look into that. I but say, yeah, Tekken is all about like big booty damage and <laughs> tons of like pff, like clashes and stuff. And that that seems like what like Smash Ultimate is going towards because you know the things like there's more damage in one v ones, right? Like that was like wild to me. I was like, what? Really? Like they they really want you to go in <laughs> in yeah. this game? Yeah. So. Yeah, um, I always um my biggest complaint with Smash Four is this, is way too passive. Yeah, and that's the only thing that holds it back. Everything else about it, the elegance of the move sets, every every character is different. Mm -hmm. A lot of like variety, like it's great. It's yeah. just when you're playing to win, and like when you see people <laughs> playing really lame. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's cases even at high level, like high aggressive games, like yeah. they're, you're gonna run into two characters that they're gonna make you grind to a halt. Yeah, because like they're they're oppressive. They they don't want you to come in at them, yeah. and that's fine. But when it's prominent in your game's meta, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, you know, and 
now that Smash Ultimate is like, okay, you get rewarded for crossing people up, you get rewarded for grabbing them, you get rewarded for edge guarding. Yeah. It's looking pretty good all looking now. Looking pretty spicy. Right? You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, again, like, that's why the characters like Ganondorf is probably going to be the head <laughs> oh of the Oh, my God, Ganondorf. You see that gif of his, like, <laughs> yeah, his the, short the, hop forward air? It's like, <laughs> it's like two kicks super fast. Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> stuff like that. Like, yeah. You know, that's going to get people in and be like, you know, I want to do hype stuff like that. I yeah. want to go for these hype setups. Yeah. And, and they're going to be rewarded for that because, like, it's going to – the game's intended for that. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know if you know this because I, I watch – I think I watch, like, at least, like, a week's worth of, like, gameplay for mm-hmm. Smash Ultimate. Yeah. From what, I can t- from what I can tell, not – all the pro players you're playing right now, they're still playing, like, Smash 4. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because, you know, they're not really showcasing what, yeah. what the game could potentially yeah. be. Yeah, because they're not keeping in mind of the the subtleties has been changed. Like um, there's dash canceling where like mm-hmm. if you if you dash, you can literally cancel that animation to like, like a jab, like a jab a toe. up smash, down smash, yeah. a jump. Which is by the way, everybody's jumps amazing this game now because everybody's universal jumping. So you should not be complaining about jump squat. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like all that stuff. Like I I, I barely seen that from pro players. I probably only seen like Leffen and Zero use yeah. it for the most part. Everybody else is like playing it like Smash Four. Yeah. Which is unfortunate because like it's just bad habits. Yeah. You know, but granted, it's it's it makes sense because they didn't get that much time to u- utilize like mm-hmm. what the game was capable of doing. Mm-hmm. They just kind of throw them as like, oh here have fun. Yeah. Which thankfully <laughs> some people kind of like adapted and be like, all right, I think I could do this and that. Yeah. But like, uh, man, like the <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, but the going going back to like the the pro players like mm-hmm. again like they 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 just they're stuck in their ways. Yeah, they they just they it's just a, can't. I, I was, can't I was yeah, I was frustrated. I was like, man, I want to see some of the new <laughs> tech being like yeah. that was implemented. Like, I want to see tech throws. I want to yeah. see them like um, dash cancel to stuff. Yeah, utilize that really well. Start stop going for B and B stuff because that's <laughs> everybody knows down throw to like up till it's gonna probably work for most characters. Yeah, because it's a low knockback. It's a low percent. Yeah, like do something wild and crazy. Like which 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 has been made, but like. You gotta kind of have to force them in that situation. Yeah, you know. Um, actually, I want to talk about Esam too. Like, I don't know if you heard of uh, uh, Panda Global's Esam. Uh, I've heard of him. Yeah, yes. yeah. So he's uh the world's best Pikachu player. Uh, oh, oh, I yeah, know yeah. that. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. so I saw some clips of Pikachu yeah. where like he did like this uh this <coughs> Nair drag down. Yeah. Um, so a character I think was Mewtwo or Marth, mm. and he did a, a dare after that, and that was never a thing like in other games. Yeah, usually Pikachu was oppressive, but like he had a fine, he had a harder time trying to like get in and out. Yeah, um, it seemed like easier for him to get in, and like he definitely showcased like the new like capabilities that Pikachu was doing. Mm. Pikachu, I think Pikachu is like gonna be wild <laughs> in that game, because not only that Nair combos into itself, but like Nair can also like. Settle for like more utility attacks and like, mm. more uh, like get off me's or offensive things and stuff like that. Yep. Um, more um, edge guarding opportunities again, like dragging them off stage mm. into like a dare, or just dragging them off and just letting them like try to recover and go for a footstool. Yeah. Which is, it still baffles me because like it requires them to go out, go out of your way to do something wacky. Yeah. And like it definitely shoots like that top player's mentality. It's like, oh, well, now I'm, I can like play it safe. Yeah. And like do the stuff and still get away with it yeah. versus just like. I'm just gonna sit on the stage and play neutral and like wait for him to come back, then like oppress him again, and then just rinse and repeat. That's why, like again, the be- the bread and butter combos is over. It, that those days are done for like the lower end pe- people. Yes, because <laughs> I yeah. I definitely like after so for so long, like you see like down throw into whatever whatever, and it's just like man. So I, I, <laughs> I, I understand trying to get this damage on me, dog. Can you do something else? Like, yeah, can can. please come on, bro. At least make me feel good about getting my ass kicked. Yeah, I mean? like so I, I'd be like, all right, I give you that. That was actually pretty cool. Yeah, like yeah. I remember when I was in Smash and Splash. Uh, when we were in Smash Splash, like low, like low kick. Um, I was watching Void in top eight in Smash Four. They would get one grab with Sheik, one, and they got away after like them taking like sixty percent damage, and I was like. Yo, that was so cool. Like, how do you do that? Like, he he trapped him in like two dan two bouncing dancing fishes, <laughs> bouncing fishes, right? And I was like, what? Like, this is crazy. Like, what's going on? And like, uh, Smash Ultimate is gonna turn that up even more, right? Without uh, like everyone's so fast and powerful now, and like, I, I don't know. I'm I'm just so ready for this game to completely change. Uh, the way people look at Smash, new new uh, newcomers and old. I feel like uh, <laughs> it might get a little bit of the the melee crowd if they if they do two things. They have to buff uh, Waveland lag. Yeah. 
Um, cause right now you can wave land, but you can't really do too much out of that. Wave land. It. Can, can you explain, uh, what that is? All right. So imagine I'm going to use my phone on yeah. the camera, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm Mario, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm jumping onto the stage. Okay. And I slide, right? Yeah. That's, that's the wave land. Like so, you, so, so you land and you dodge somewhere? You d yeah. You air you, dodge you, into yeah. it, then you slide. And then you slide. Depending on the dodge direction you input, like if you want to uh, air dodge the right way, you're gonna slide right. If yeah. you air dodge left, you're gonna slide left. Okay. Gotcha, you know, gotcha. and the idea is imagine <coughs> your high stakes situation, where like this is like the top of the ba battlefield platform, right? Yeah. Um, the opponent's coming at you. Um, he's like right here. Yeah. And I'm right here. And I jump over to it. Yeah. And I, I kind of like slide off. You kind of yeah. want that mobility because like then it adds more extra layers of like cross up options. Yeah. That's why people for melee like that that option. Yeah. And a lot of people were complaining about it. I was like, man, what are, where's the wavelands? That's why I really need <laughs> that. Like, like air direction and air dodges are cool, but we need the wave landing. Yeah. Like, we don't want wave dashing, per se. Like, wave dashing in itself is not really a rewarding mechanic. Yeah. I mean, it is when you, cool. when you when <laughs> yeah. It is when you space yeah. it. Like, that's what all it was used for, for repositioning. But, like, dash, dash canceling kind of does the same thing. Mm -hmm. But the only reason why I feel like wave landing or wave dashing or a modified like term mm -hmm. should be in place of that because you want to like have the extra mobility coming off of edge yeah. and that's it and i feel like they might go that route if they actually take player advice yeah which has been said multiple times by like multiple pro players yeah. so i honestly feel like they might end up going with that but hopefully who's to say though like they don't have to like take it <laughs> they can be like nah we'll, we'll just leave it yeah we'll just leave it yeah fuck it <laughs> but like, when it, whenever I explain this to somebody who's casual, like, oh, I don't want that because, like, then I feel like I'm about to get oppressed. Yeah, it, no, it, yeah, they're just it, like, it sounds hard. Like, like I'm not gonna use it, but but you you know how to use it, so I I want to take that away. Yeah, right? exactly. Is that, it's it's it, like it's it like, like nah, bro. Like, that that irks. <laughs> that, that, part of my friends, but it irks the fuck out of me. Yeah, because like <laughs> that that's that that's that uh, victim mentality where like yeah. I don't I don't want you having all that power. I want you to be as weak as I am so I can at least have a chance. Yeah, like and I like, don't understand and I don't want to understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like again, like that's the, that's like usually the, the a casual's toxic point of view. Not yeah. a lot of casuals are like that. They're yeah. like whatever. I just want to have a, a fun time with good characters. Yeah, that's, that makes sense. But there's certain casuals that purpose to go out of your way just to make fun of like competitive people because like they just don't know better. And a lot yeah. of people who just don't know better they just remain to be ignorant. Yeah. For the most part. And the same thing with, um, that's not the same, that, that's not to say uh, pro players don't do that as well. Yeah. I'm not saying like pro players who are like, who are sponsored and say such like bad things. Mm. But I've seen like top level players be like, all oh, casuals are so like, you know, bad for our community and stuff like that. Like yeah. we don't need to accommodate them and stuff like that. It's like, no, we need that sustainability so you can have a good time for everybody. Yeah. So everybody can have a, a wider, well, so we can have a wide user base to accommodate everybody. Mm. And if we don't think like that, then our scenes and like you know die. Like most of the scenes, like most of the events are on the backs of casuals or people who O2 in bracket. Yeah. Like they're not guaranteed to like you know play top level players, mm. but they just want to go there for experience. If yeah. you alienate that, then how the hell are you top player like, like whatever top, top player or what? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah, <laughs> you're not gonna be a top player of who like yeah. You wouldn't be able to play anybody because of that that mindset. Mm. So again, you gotta accommodate that that type of fun factor. Yeah. No, and and I think like discussions like this need to like be like happening like on the off on the right oh, yeah. because if you don't, you know, then you got the casuals kind of like running mock with their mouths and be like, oh, we don't want this and that. Then the developers will take that for word, or yeah. the pro players too, saying X, Y, and Z, and the developers take note for that. Then yeah. like the lovers don't know what to do, then like kind of separates the scene. Mm -hmm. So uh, thankfully, Sakurai kind of knows like, okay, I think this is good for the scene and doesn't really take like bias for that. Yeah. Yeah, and and the the big uh, topic that's been going on in FGC up until recently was the uh, grassroots versus like FGC thing. So mm. you know, a lot of uh, events like like the DVFZ summit that happened, and you know, all of that stuff. The <laughs> the TV show with the like the Big Brother type TV show with all the Street Fighter players. I, I forget what it was called, but um. You know stuff like that. People are like, "Oh, well, you know, do we want esports or whatever?" And uh, you know, I yeah, I I agree with you. Like the FGC needs to move like a little bit away from that because esports gonna happen whether people want it to or not, right? Right. So that that topic's pretty much been settled, but it needs to move over, yeah, to this other topic of casuals and pro players, right? Need to meet together and find a middle ground and stop alienating each other. 
right? Because casuals will definitely look at a pro player and be like, well, either I can't approach them or, like, they suck and they're terrible or, right. you know, or they're, they're so good and, like, I'm not worthy to be in their presence. It's like all three of these mentalities are just, like, they're, they're bad, right? They're just people, right? right? They're people. They're not, like, higher beings, right? Like, it's just another person just like you. Right, like I like I remember like um when I went to defend the North and I walked up to Knuckledew uh to ask him for casuals in Street Fighter Five and I remember the faces of everyone around us like, What what are you doing? Like you you're not gonna win, right? Like who what are you doing? Right? And I'm just like just getting getting practice, right? Yeah. And I took like a like a couple rounds off, like a few rounds off, but like of course I hadn't win any sets. But like, you know, that's like part of the magic of the fighting game community. It's like you can walk up to anybody and just be like, yo, you want to play something? Right? And that togetherness and that like uh, binding of both sides, yeah, it's going to help the developers too, right? Because, yeah, it's like you said, developers only will only really listen to pro players. And the pro players, at you know, on some level, like they, they control – pretty much what the game looks like, right? For, right. like, the mid-level on down, right? So, um, but it, it needs to be one big community, right? It, it can't be, like, you know, casuals ki- kind of, like, being, like, the best at, and with your friends, best at your local, best in the country. Like, no, nah, like, there's, there's too many categories, <laughs> right? Like, it's, it's got to be, like, all one, so. Um, but, uh, we're 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 running uh, a little over, uh, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna cut it off right here. Oh. Uh, uh, thank you for coming. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pleasure. Man. Like I yeah. I I, t- I tend to talk about this stuff like hmm. like whenever I go to tournaments, like yeah, yeah. Well, how do you feel about this beat that's going on right now, yeah. or how do you feel about this game's design yeah. choice and stuff like that. So. Yeah, yeah, I I I really do think. That um, <laughs> that's another part of the FGC that is really like hilarious to me. Is just like how fast the fires of uh conflict can just get started. Oh yeah. <laughs> All Sonic <laughs> said was that Smash looks like fun and that he might be able to be zero. Like LOL. Like like he was just poking fun. And so it was like, what? <laughs> well, from what I can gather, um, I I've seen some tweets like zero kind of like spooed like power brief. Yeah. Like, it, it was probably it was a misunderstanding. Yeah. Um. It's it probably is not gonna be that bad. It's just again, it probably yeah. seems like a hidden motive that's going on right now. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, like we can see some more like cross cross ups. We got well not cross ups, but like cross, <laughs> oh you oh, I got cross ups. Cross, <laughs> cross, uh, cross promotion. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Like I, I think it's a beautiful thing, regardless. Mm. Yeah. But uh. But yeah, yeah, so we're gonna uh, we're gonna leave you guys. Uh, thank thank you all for watching. Thank you for coming. Uh, like I say at the end of uh, every stream that Low Kick does, we uh, would not be anything without you guys, our loyal fans. Um, I'm Klaus Mons. Uh, your uh, I, f- I always forget what my official title is. <laughs> <laughs> like, like I call myself a commentator, but, like, I'm also a player, too. Um, I, I guess lead broadcaster there. Um, and this is... All right. J-Rock. It's J-Rock Pony, or yep. your, uh, your intern streamer. Intern streamer. Yo, <laughs> so, you're a lead yeah. streamer, bro. <laughs> like, you, you got to be... You got to be there, bro. Like, like you yeah. got to take... take a uh, pride in your title, like you do a lot for us, and I we really appreciate you, J. Rod. Yeah. yeah, but uh, thank you everybody, and we will see you later. <laughs>